This trip takes our investigators to a location where skepticism has no place inside. A place with as much paranormal history as it does normal. So definitely bring your tears. You scared the shit out of me. And also your fears. Footsteps out there. Because we guarantee you this time, it's going to get a little personal for someone. Maybe too personal. Very few experience the paranormal. Most don't believe it's real. But we know the truth. That's why we're in search of a real paranormal thing. Early September of 2018, Nathan Galler began a journey from his hometown of St. Louis, Missouri, towards a direction that would change his life forever. His place of interest is in Malvern, Iowa, at a location said to be highly active with paranormal activity. On this trip, he'll be accompanied by fellow investigator Faye Gallo from the team Angels of Light Paranormal Society, commonly known as ALPS, based out of Marysville, California. But first, he'll need to make a pit stop to the airport in Kansas City to pick her up. And it doesn't take long for the craziness to begin. But despite the fun moments, having someone along with serious work ethics is key. Faye is definitely a qualified investigator with boots on the ground expertise in EVP research, a true leader in her field of work. And before they knew it, they were within a stone's throw reach of their destination. It's right here on the corner. Turn. Or park right here. Arriving at Baldwin Manor. Malvern Manor, subject of countless claims of paranormal activity ranging from the simple to the demonic. It's been the topic of documentaries and books, and it's here that they'll be for two nights. They'll also be sharing the building at opposite ends of each other with three friends of Faye's, all of whom have much experience in the field. As a strong thunderstorm rolled in, Nathan set up a REM pod, but then discovered he was missing a laptop power cord which controlled the SLS camera. This meant he would need to pause the investigation and drive into town to locate one. He left a full spectrum camera aiming down the nurse's station hallway. Unbeknownst to him, it recorded the other three as they investigated. What the fuck was that? This is some of the activity they encountered. Assistance here. Hello. Hi, I'm here to help. So, we need to bubble bath. A little, little cow gun, take me away. You heard that right? That was inside, not outside. Easier 
easier for me. Come on. Hello? Come on, I got the wheelchair. Take a break. I'll be back. See if you're interested in doing anything. Maybe bath time again. What the fuck was that? That was it. Meanwhile, Nathan, along with Faye, hit the road in the approaching thunderstorm in hopes of finding the power cord at the local department store. Once found, they quickly headed back just before the storm intensified. Ironically, the storm followed them back. After they returned, a funny thing happened once Faye discovered an SLS camera was being used. Knowing how it operated, she felt the desire to experience it herself. So she stepped in front of it. Unfortunately, Seeing herself as a stick figure in real time wasn't possible since she couldn't be in front of and behind the laptop at the same time. Sorry, Faye. We hope seeing this eventually made up for it. It wasn't 20 minutes after returning before the thunderstorm got so bad, they felt it best to break down and exit as fast as possible. The possibility of flooding or even worse, a tornado, was too great a risk for anyone to remain there any longer. So they immediately gathered their equipment and departed safely to their hotels. By the next day when they returned, they were greeted with a sight that made the previous night's decision to leave seem even smarter. Large trees were uprooted and long tree limbs were scattered all about everywhere you looked. It was everything short of a miracle considering nothing was destroyed. A tree that was split down the middle and weighing across the covered carport in the rear was swiftly removed. As the day rolled on, they were eventually told it was safe to enter. However, so much time had passed, it was difficult to regain their momentum, so they did what they could to salvage the time they had left inside. And within a few hours, 
another storm was over them beating down. But before the storm arrived, the others had instead chosen to go to another location in another town. Nathan and Faye remained to investigate. As always, Faye catches amazing EVPs. This is one such EVP caught in the kitchen during one of her conversations with Nathan. As the day seemed uneventful and the end of the evening neared, this is an edited down version of what happened during their last few hours. Would you like me to show you what it looks like, the, the gadget you're touching? Oh, well, you're doing a great job. Phew. Yeah, have you seen these before? Yeah. Here, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna come near you. I'm gonna touch that so you can sh so I can show you what it does. Okay, and then I'll back away. for anyone? Are you happy here? We may not be able to hear you, but through these little electronic devices that obviously were not around when you were, you know, like here, um, to help us, to help us to hear from you, to help us to understand, to communicate. I do apologize if we're acting like everybody else, asking questions, asking you to touch this, do that, do this. But we cannot see you. We know it takes a lot of energy for you to show yourself to somebody. We're not asking you to do that. Admittedly, Nathan did not hear exactly what was said until a few weeks later when Faye sent him a copy of that clip upon review. He only thought he had heard four words through the phonetic setting, which he already knew wasn't normal for the device to perform. The Ovilus 3 device, we think, has a database of a few thousand words in wavelength file form. Spirits talk at a level undetectable by the human ear, but the device's sensor can hear it. To translate it, it then matches the wavelength it catches against a wave file in its database. Despite the name Nathan not being in it, using the phonetic mode, this allows his name to come through as two syllables together. Come on, make it buzz again. So we know if you're still here. Thank you. Thank you. It wasn't too much longer before the two of them began to expire, and they decided to end the investigation completely. Ultimately, the evening ended with very little evidence captured. Or at least, that's what they thought, until they saw and heard exactly what was recorded.
That's when they knew they were going back. But as fate would have it, something unexpected, something destructive, something life-threatening took center stage. The campfire of Butte County lasted from November 8th to the 25th of 2018 and resulted in 85 deaths. It was the most destructive wildfire in California's history, with an accumulation of 18,804 buildings destroyed. The cause, an electrical power line. I was already well aware of the fires, but what I wasn't aware of was how close it was to their home. I mean, my God. She has children, she has grandchildren. Where, where are they gonna go? Over time, her family had all gathered at various shelters and were saved. But the fires had spread too far. They lost their homes and all their possessions. Their memories were gone. At the time, Faye was a docent aboard the USS Hornet. As coping became difficult and space was necessary, she sought refuge aboard. Their being around friends who loved her she found the strength to heal all while beginning to rebuild their lives. Eventually, she got her life back on track. Let it be known that this woman is by far no quitter. And she proved it, because 10 months later, she was once again back in the driver's seat, headed for Malvern. Obviously, the bad weather wasn't going to give them a break because there it was, building up on the horizon just like it did the year before. And even worse, it was heading their way. This time, it was only the two of them investigating. One night was all they had. Unlike last year, this trip they arrived on time so they could get a proper historical and paranormal tour. They were greeted upon arrival by Josh Hurd, co-owner of Malvern Manor. After the warm introduction, he takes them inside for their much-needed tour. Guys, this is what we call the lobby. So we know when this building was originally constructed, it was in the mid-1800s. We know that by the late 1800s, this building was in full operation as a hotel. So primarily it was servicing the railroad, which was just a couple hundred yards out the front door. People coming and going all the time. Now we also know that this room kind of doubled as a gentleman's parlor where the guys would sit around and they would uh, sip their whiskey and smoke their stogies and all that fun stuff. Now one of the original owners of the building was this gentleman right here. And this is who we affectionately refer to as the captain. Captain Coolers was his name. Uh, he was one of the first people to really come to the area and like settle, build a family and a life. Uh, he has very strong ties to this building. A lot of people are claiming to run into him up on the second floor. I'm fairly confident in saying that the good captain isn't too cool with what we're doing here. I will say that because he's kind of a pissy old guy. Uh, but we do know that this place ran as a hotel all the way up until the 1950s. Now at that time, it takes kind of an odd turn and becomes what we would consider to be so there's a very odd section of building over there that just kind of jets out from everything else and it looks like it doesn't belong and that's what we call the nursing home wing. That was what was put on in 1956 to kind of accommodate this nursing home. Now, we also know it didn't last very long. Uh, in the 70s, the state of Iowa comes in and they shut them down because their hallways weren't wide enough to support transporting patients. So this is where History becomes the most fascinating for people like myself, and that's where it becomes the group home. Now, the group home is servicing any type of mental disorder you can possibly imagine. Uh, things that we see every day, people with Down syndrome, people with drug and alcohol abuse, but very common type of illness, all the way to the opposite side of the coin where you have people with multiple personality, DID, um, schizophrenics, even murderers, or housing. So this is 
very odd population of people kind of coexisting under the same roof. Hey guys, this area here, this is where people are experiencing a gentleman spirit referring to himself as the captain the most. Um, usually greeted with a disembodied voice, sometimes quite audible. Usually asking you what's your business, sometimes just flat out telling you to F off. Um, again, I'm fairly confident in saying that he is not too cool with what we are doing here. People are getting punched, scratched, bit, kicked. Usually after a fair amount of provoking is involved. so. If those people are asking for it, who's to say? I don't know. <laughs> but this is what I always say is probably one of the biggest unsolved mysteries we have here. But this is what we call Inez's room. The story with Inez Gibson is we know she was 12 years old. The year was 1900. It was December 21st of 1900, so right around Christmas time. 12-year-old Inez is outside playing with her 8-year-old brother Otto. She's either cold or bored, but she says, I'm going upstairs. Otto says, I'm right behind you. Well, we know 10 minutes go by. Otto comes upstairs, finds his sister Inez hanging by her jump rope in the closet. It looks like a suicide. It kind of smells like a suicide. Like These kids had had a very rough go of life up until this point anyway. Um, so suicide isn't necessarily off the table. Um, it is pretty interesting. We know Otto tries to get her down. He can't. Because uh, he's not strong enough, he runs to the grocery store, and that's where aunt and uncle are working. Now, aunt and uncle are also adopted mom and dad to these kids. Um, this was a very new living situation for all parties involved, but we know he grabs them. He grabs two doctors as well, which seems like just dumb luck in small town Iowa in 1900. But they race back, they get her down, they try to help her, but I mean, there was no bringing her back. You know, way too much time had passed. Like, this story absolutely shook the entire community. Even one of the doctors that was trying to help her commit suicide 10 days after the fact, like this gets messy, you know? Now what I can tell you is one of the most active spirits we have here is a little girl claiming to be Inez Gibson. Uh, you will hear her running up and down the halls, uh, laughing, crying, singing, things like that. Sometimes she'll call you by name, ask you to come and play. It's terrifying, <laughs> but regardless, we can also tell you 100% definitively that Inez Gibson never died here. We know she died not even a block away, just on Main Street over here where the doctor's clinic is now. That's where their house sat, and that's where this tragedy took place. So why, why she would be here? Guys, this is what we call Hank's room, or Henry's room, and I always kind of say, it kind of depends on the day and what he wants to be called, but he's your very stereotypical grumpy old man. Apparently in life, he would sit out on the front porch, he would throw rocks at kids, like, just kind of an ass. Um, but again, everything is how we found it in this room. Um, we also know he has a very strong dislike for females. Um, he does not enjoy the company of ladies at all. Um, he'll call you pretty much any vulgar name you can imagine, and his vocabulary is epic to say the very least. Uh, but like I said, everything is how we found it, including even the, the clothes in the dresser drawer here. Uh, now the clothes kind of seem to be the, the antecedent for activity. Messing with the clothes, uh, folding the clothes up nicely, and placing them back in the drawer or whatever. Ladies, especially putting on the clothing, is usually enough to upset him, that's for sure. Now this has nothing to do with anything, but I always show people. Um, but in this drawer here, there are like fingernail clippings, 
things of that nature, which is super gnarly. Kind of disgusting. <laughs> but yeah. Again, it's just like one of those things that we have found that we haven't that we haven't touched, you know? Cruising down the hall a little bit. These two rooms here are fairly interesting, so I had the nursing staff walk me through this building, and this was one of the areas they stopped. The story they told me was kind of interesting just because they said the gentleman in room 18 pretty much had this bed check schedule down to a science, and three to four times per week he would sneak across the hall into room 17 over here where he would then sexually assault the gentleman that was in this room. Um, Personally, I've seen over 150 pieces of documentation that would suggest very similar things were happening. Um, it always kind of rubbed me the wrong way just because 150 is a lot. And just once or twice would probably be enough to then take one of these guys out of the equation. But that never happened. Um, I also could tell you that they coexisted for at least five years across the hall from one another. So again, it's not making a lot of sense to me, right? Like why they would be allowed to coexist here. Okay. Um, one evening we are doing a, an event here with a couple of the guys uh, from that show, Ghost Hunters. And we were in room 17 asking very specific questions about the assault. And, and plain as day, the voice comes over and it says, that never happened. And it was very adamant. And so I was, obviously I perked up a little bit and I was like, well, what did happen, right? He said, I loved him. Now, over the next two hours, the spirit suggested that they were, in fact, a couple. They loved each other very much. I don't know what to think of the nursing staff yet um, in the documentation. I know any form of sexual anything has to be documented, no matter what. So that may lend itself to why we would have so much, but also maybe lend itself to why they weren't separated, because maybe it wasn't an actual issue to begin with, so who knows. Um, I don't know if you noticed this at all. I already noticed the door was open. Mm -hmm. The light's on. It's on? The light's on. <laughs> right when I got here, like, I went right to the front door. Like, I have not been up here. <laughs> oh boy, awesome. So guys, this is obviously the attic. Um, we don't know what the purpose of the attic was. Now, I would suggest it probably had a purpose. There's trim, there's baseboards, there's moldings, there's paint. But guys, up here we hear a lot of growling, scratching, disembodied voices, usually throwing out death threats, telling you to F off, die, I'm going to kill you, things like that. It's, it's not a very welcoming place at all. Um, initially, when we were investigating here, and we were hearing like the growling and scratching specifically, I thought it's probably an animal. Like it's an old building. It's very feasible that an animal would come in here. Now, the only place I can really squeeze through is back here on either side. Uh, there are crawl spaces. So I've been back through there now eight different times specifically looking for carcass, uh, droppings, anything suggesting an animal, right? The only things that I have found back there are very personal type items. So a tobacco pouch, playing cards, keys, crushed up packs of cigarettes, things of that nature, but nothing suggesting an animal at all. Whoever this is does not enjoy people at all. He'll tell you, F off and die, I'm going to kill you, and blah, blah, blah. But then he is going to beg you for alcohol and cigarettes, which is why I have this cute little collection sitting over here on the floor. Uh, more of like a peace offering. And guys, that's pretty much the whole damn tour though. And now that the tour is over, the equipment can be distributed where needed. Without hesitation, Nathan sets forth and assembles cameras, tripods, and sensory devices. This is something he has always taken seriously and respected.
After an hour, there were two full-spectrum camcorders on tripods running on both floors and two portable units ready to go. It was finally time to start. Since Faye was drawn to the room with the photo albums, they began there. Who's here with us right now? Are you here? Yeah. Looked like you guys had a good time. Upset when they when they had to close this down as a nursing home. I wonder where you guys went then. Hmm. Can you repeat that, please? Looks like you guys had fun on Halloween. I like Halloween. out here with us I would have came and visited but I'm here now wow look like you guys had a lot of fun oh there goes Santa oh you guys get snow too Oof. it gets cold <laughs> really loved it here. I want to thank you for sharing your books with us. And I don't cry. <laughs> I'm not a crier. You know that. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and you're on me crying. <laughs> I just, I just have this overwhelming, just, I just, connection. yeah. I mean, it's just, maybe it's just, you know, but they, they really look like they really enjoyed themselves. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is really cute.
This is really your guys' home, huh? Where'd you guys go when they closed it down? Wow. Well, I thank you for letting us look at your photo albums. I'm glad they were here for Josh to share them with us. When I was looking at the photo album with all the people in it, I was overwhelmed with emotion and I couldn't control and I started crying. And it was weird because I don't cry. I avoid crying and it was just unusual and overwhelming. What happened next was kind of a continuation of what happened a year ago on our first visit. shot here. To the spirits here in Melbourne. We were here a year ago. We were investigating around this time of night. It was September 1st, 2018. Yeah, I was getting ready to ask if you heard that too. We'd like to connect with you. We're not here to provoke, intimidate. We're here to see if we can reach out to you and get a message from you. have somebody you'd like to give a message to besides us family friends I'm gonna turn this device on here it might help you to communicate it helped you before let's try this again this is an obelisk It might be able to hear your language from where you are. That was my stomach. When you speak, you speak at a lower frequency that we cannot hear with our own ears. We need electronic equipment to record you, play it back, and we can hear you better. You're free to reach out to us. Please, we ask that you do not reach out aggressively. We're here. We're here because we care and we want to know if we can help you. from last time we were here, I know you guys see lots of people day in and day out. I'm sure sometimes you wish they would just leave you alone, right? I know how that can be. You want to just relax and be left alone and people keep bugging you and asking you questions. device in front of us right here on this tripod has a wire antenna sticking off of it. If you can come really close to touching it, an alarm will go off and we'll know you're standing within five feet of us. Us. And we really, really 
just want to communicate with you and help tell your side of the story, what life was like for you here. We both personally enjoyed seeing the books, the memories you had when you were happy here. And we hope you were happy here. I feel honored to see the smiles that you carried, the fun that you had and shared. Okay. Captain, are you here, sir? Did Josh say the captain didn't like people being here? Or he did? He didn't. He didn't like what they were doing here with the investigating. into something positive for you instead of something that is an annoyance can you tell us how Chilly. There's pressure around my ears. Mr. Wallace, are you here today? What about the little girl I heard last time I was here? Can you tell me your name? Was that you? that did capture some of your voices, but where I lived last year in November, we had bad fires and the house I was renting burned and all that was burned with it. And I just felt like there were so many things that a lot of you were trying to tell me and I didn't get a chance to hear that. It's another reason why I'm out here. I'm hoping that you guys will remember us and, and our main goal is about helping you and understanding that maybe you guys, once again, will reach out and talk to us. Because I felt really bad that I wasn't able to listen to all of that, to be able to really come back and say, hey, I heard that. I did hear some of you. Do you guys want to talk to us? If not, Nathan and I are just going to talk to each other. And you can join in in the conversation. It seemed as though last time we were here that something was trying to reach out or someone, pardon me, my apologies. It seemed as though someone was trying to reach out to me by saying, where are you, Nathan, through the obelisk. If that's so, I welcome you to try again. Say, where are you, Nathan? I 
I bring this up because two weeks before we were here last year, my mother passed away. think that that was my mother, but if it was, try again. you had and shared. Love you. Love you. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know what to say. Where are you, Nathan? Mother? Love you. A few years after this video was captured, I met up with a brother who informed me that during my mom's final hours, when I was not present, some of her final words were, where are you, Nathan? Where's Nathan? He didn't know about this film. It was her. It was her. This proves that no matter where you are, those we lost and loved dearly can still reach out to us unexpectedly. All you need to do is pay attention. see anything okay because it feels like a burn like a burn like is the best way I can describe weird the lack of scratches on her cheekbone does not mean that Faye didn't experience what she described feeling something could have meant she was merely being touched whereas an actual scratch would have been viewed as an act of aggression but in this moment she didn't see this as anything negative. Because I don't, I don't get that kind of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's weird. Because I could still feel the sensation. No, it, it, it's not as... It's not as burny, but it's still like... If I, I, it's hard to describe. Okay, we'll go back in there and see. When we were in there, we were asking questions, and I had this feeling of like being scratched. Well, not really scratched, but I had this burning sensation on my cheekbone, and there was no actual marks of it. But we got close up video and tried taking pictures, but nothing there. Okay, we 
walked out of here, and as you can hear us talking, it feels like someone possibly tried to touch my face. I moved the hair out of the way. There's no mark on me. And if, if you touched me, I didn't take it as you trying to hurt me in any way. So don't get scared of that. Um, but was it you that tried? Are you trying to get my attention? Can you tell me what your name is, please? Is everybody else jealous because you got such a big room with a great view? Nathan cautiously keeps his distance as he follows behind Faye with his camera along the second floor. Just as they round the top of the staircase, the energy levels drastically change around them. What happens next catches him totally off guard. Okay, there's footsteps on there. We rounded that corner, and I could swear I heard footsteps behind me, and they were not stepping at the same time I was stepping, and they were solid, and they were there. And I'm not joking. They were real as can be, because I had even, I stopped walking, and they were still okay. happening. Scared the shit out of me. We just walked into this room, there were footsteps right behind me. And then when I turned around and looked the direction where they were coming from, then they started coming from beside me. not my, my footsteps from the pressure resettling. That was actually, they were stepping after mine. See it? I see your hair standing up. Goosebumps. Why well, I see it, like... Yeah. You're going away now. Yeah. There's one possibility as to who that might have been. One of the most active spirits we have here is a little girl claiming to be Inez Gibson. Uh, you'll hear her running up and down the halls, laughing, crying, singing, things like that. Sometimes she'll call you by name, ask you to come and play. It's terrifying. <laughs> if only she would have come back. Recording. Do you need the light on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now you recall that a year ago we were here and the footage that we got showed, I mean, you could hear the obelisk yeah. saying, where are you, Nathan? Right. Okay. <laughs> But this being the anniversary, I wanted to see if we could reconnect with the same spirit. Yeah, sure. Or, or whatnot. And so. Fear that something was trying to reach out. Or someone. Pardon me. My apologies. It seemed as though someone was trying to reach out to me by saying. Where are you, 
Nathan through the obelisk. If that's so, I welcome you to try again. Random syllables. Can you say, where are you, Nathan? I bring this up because two weeks before we were here last year, my mother passed away. I don't think that that was my mother, but if it was, try again. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. So it kind of sounded like to me that like love you. Yeah, I was kind of going to lose it there. <laughs> That was basically one of our highlights of the evening. That's insane. <laughs> wow. Too intelligent. Yeah. All phonetic. In phonetic mode. Not in Q&A dictionary right. or anything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Dude. That's pretty intense. <laughs> I mean, for you to say, like, try it again. And in you three know, seconds. And right there. Immediately within three seconds of an intelligent response. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. That's pretty phenomenal. That right there is just, uh, it, it seems too perfect, too beautiful to be coincidence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And so the investigation of Malvern officially comes to a close. So we are ending this investigation here. It is now time to descend to the lobby, where last minute preparations are made to depart. That was genuine. They turn off all electronics, pack them away, and return them to the vehicle. Then they thank the spirits present for their interaction and request no tag-alongs or attachments, that all must remain where they are. Thank you for watching.